Hello there, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're safe and well. In this video, I'll be trying to make my pellet catchers more garden friendly. Let's roll the titles. We're back in the bee shed for this one then, at the end of my garden. Right, what's this all about then? Well, you've probably all seen these before. I've used these on other videos, my two pellet catchers. I've got the 14 centimetre one and I've got the 17 centimetre one. And the biggest problem with these, oh, just saying as well that you can get the flat ones that don't have the cones, so they're a little bit um, shallower. And uh, what we're talking about today, probably work with those. If it works with these, we'll see. So, problem with these then is even at longer distances when you shoot these, there's a fair old clunk when a pellet hits them. So they're not exactly garden friendly if you're going to want to be spending a fair amount of time in the garden shooting at them. You can imagine if, you're, uh, if your neighbours lazing on their lounger next door sipping cocktails they don't want to leave, be listening to a clunk 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 all afternoon while you're enjoying yourself shooting so for the sake of friendly inter-neighbor relations i'm going to have a look at uh, what i can do to um, deaden the sound a little bit so um, it's not so annoying and uh, i'm going to try two different approaches and uh, see what, which one works best now, I think what I've mentioned before is um, what I've tried in the past is stuffing a, a rag inside the target. Um, this is an old bit of t-shirt. You can see here it's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty well used. Um, it does work to some extent but it's not great so we're going to try something different. So, let's get going. Well, on reflection, as an afterthought, I'd also I thought I'd also add something else in the mix. Now, I'm aware that um, not everybody has got the luxury of being able to set up a uh, backstop of any description in their garden. And if you do want to shoot in your garden and you can't create a permanent backstop, then uh, I'm going to show you a way of uh, making a temporary one, which is a box like this, which, uh, which uh, is... Uh, is what I use now and again in the garden. Allows you to quickly move uh, the box to any direction and uh, if you make it right, safely traps pellets inside so you're not going to have any uh, deflections or any pellets going anywhere that you don't want to. And we always need a safe backstop, don't we? So uh, we'll have a look at, uh, at making one of those as well. Well, I guess we're, all go we're going all blue Peter today. As you see, I'm going to use my homemade shooting table as a handicraft table. Dual use shooting table, eh? Who knew? We're going to start with the uh, the bigger target. And uh, what we're going to need is some duct tape, box cutter, a bit of cardboard to make a template, steel rule, pencil, and uh, some lining material. And what I'm going to use is I've got this carpet tile that I bought from one of these discount stores and this was under three quid. I think it was 2 99 something like that. So it's got quite a thick back back in and we'll see if this will do the job. We might we might try doubling up actually, doubling up just to uh, to make it uh, you know super quiet. But uh, let's get started. So first up then we want to make our template. So what I'm going to be doing is drawing around one side of this uh, of this target. So two sides and the back. Yeah. Oh, that looks a bit skew with. Let's check that. Yeah, it is. 
We'll try that again. Line it up a bit better. That's a bit better. Right. Now, because that's the outside, to make an allowance for the thickness of the metal, we're gonna we're gonna cut inside that line. So I reckon probably about probably about five mil inside that line would do. So we'll cut there. And there. Turn it round. And there. Okay. Cut that out. push that out and we've got our template so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the carpet tile and using the template I'm going to cut out uh, eight pieces of carpet because I want to double up inside so I'll spare you that and we'll come back when I've done that okay so I've got my four pieces cut and you can see that what I did is took them to a point and I've cut that point off because I want to make sure that we try and stop the noise from a pellet that goes right through the middle. But um, having cut them, fitted them inside, I think we're going to need to trim them a little bit. There we are, all the way around. Right, you can see they need a little bit of trimming so that they all fit. So what I'm probably going to do is take a at least a centimetre off the back edge of each one so that they uh, so they fit in and still allow you to slide your target in. So I'm going to do that and I'll come back. So I've taken a, a one centimetre strip off this back edge off of all of these and as you'll see now if I slot them all in See, they've all fit in quite snugly now, and um, we can get out, we can slide our target in. So, what I need to do now is to put duct tape on the back edge of all of these to join them together so we can slot this in and out. And there we have it. Finished lining. So now we need to shoot it and see if it's quieter. So that's the bigger pellet catcher sorted. Then we're going to try a different approach, a different method with a smaller one, which is my uh, 14 centimetre. Uh, and this is uh, something I've seen suggested uh, online in the past in forums and on other groups. And uh, don't know if it works, so we'll give it a try. It seems feasible, but it's used in this stuff called Plumber's Mate, uh, which is pretty cheap to buy. Um, and it's uh, it says on here it's a non-setting putty for sanitary joints and all we're going to do is divide this up in big enough portions to smear on the four inside faces in this uh, pellet catcher. So let's give that a go shall we? Now I'm not sure our uh, 
sticky or pliable this stuff is. So uh, don't tell the missus, but I've borrowed the cling film from the kitchen to uh, just make sure we don't get it stuck everywhere. So, sort that out. There you go. Oh, got the table ready. Right, let's have a look at this stuff then. I'm guessing we don't need to use the whole tub, but oh, it's it's like quite a thick version of uh, plasticine or play-doh, I guess. So oh, it's quite fairly sticky. So what I'm going to do is just take a bit out and then. Take it out bit by bit and just try pressing it in. It sticks well enough. Yeah, it's quite sticky. I don't know how thick it needs to be. I suppose I'll keep it about as near as a centimetre thick as I can. So what I'm going to do is, is carry on applying this to the other edges and I'll come back when I'm done. Right there we go then. You can see I haven't used the whole pot it's pretty thick and hard to uh, pull out the pot but I found as you probably saw it was easier to pull a little bit out at a time and um, and then push that in sticks to the um, sticks to the steel quite well actually makes the target quite heavy when it's done and I can imagine that probably if you wanted to uh, after you've shot so many pellets in there you could take it out and take the pellets out and uh, and reuse it. Um, I already had this in the shed uh, but I'm pretty certain that you can pick this up from most DIY places. Uh, I think the last time I saw the price it was about uh, £8 or less a pot so not too expensive. So there's that one done then so we need to shoot this as well now. Let's talk about your portable backstop then. First off, you need a box. Obviously, the size of box is dependent on how confident you are of uh, hitting it. If you're uh, pretty accurate, then obviously smaller box. If you have a bigger box, less chance of missing. But um, nice stout box. This is a nice size for me. This is the one that my coffee pods come in. Now what we want to do with this box is basically pack it with as dense a material as we can because we want the pellets going in but we don't want the pellets coming out. So what sort of things can we pack it with it then? Well I've got a bit of a selection here. First off you get these uh, these little DIY catalogues that you get um, are a good size to fit in the box and they're fairly dense. Unfortunately we don't have the yellow pages anymore but uh, that would have been ideal. Or your, uh, your used air gun mags, you can fold them over and stuff as many of those in as you can to make it as dense as possible. What else is there? Well, rags obviously. I've got some old socks, um, an old sweatshirt. If you've got an old pair of jeans or something like that, you can roll that up. I'm also going to give this a try as well. Um, we get the old Hello Fresh food deliveries and the um, uh, the cool bags that come in them are made out of this recyclable material. This is a sort of plastic filament, but it actually feels as if it might be ideal because it's quite dense, and I reckon that uh, you know that will be quite good as a pellet stop. So we've got a couple of bits of that. So I'm going to cut this up and make this uh, uh, make mine out of this and uh, shove some other bits and pieces in to fill the space. Uh, one of the things to be aware of uh, 
is you might need to put some stones or a big rock or something in the bottom of the box uh, to, to make it heavy enough at the base so that it stays standing up. But if you do use uh, things like this, these are quite dense, so them in the bottom of the box, that's going to be enough to stop it from falling over. Okay, so uh, I'm going to put all my pack this up with my stuff, fold the lid down, uh, put a bit of tape across the top, and then you can attach your targets on the front. Uh, I use drawing pins, but you can tape them on. Uh, you could even tape a clip at the top that you can clip your targets in as well if you want. Um, so we'll give this a try out in the garden and see uh, how this compares for sound uh, to our modified pellet catchers. Here's my box packed up then. You can see that I've got uh, plenty of layers of that compressed. I put a few socks in there as well to fill it out and I've got three of my catalogues at the back here so any pellets that do manage to work their way through here have got a pretty solid uh, layer to get through so there's no danger of the pellets coming out the back of the box also that gives the box a little bit of weight so it's not gonna it's not gonna fall over um, when it gets hit and uh, so all I need to do is to is to tape that up and then we'll be sorted. Well, let's assess the results then. I haven't seen the, uh, the shooting video footage so I can't compare like with like right next to the target. All I can do is is compare what I hear 25 yards away from where I'm shooting. So talking with the first, uh, the larger of the pellet catchers then, uh, I shot them initially with just one uh, layer of carpet. Um, that didn't seem to me to significantly reduce the noise. So I ended up putting a, uh, I got the impression that the pellets were deflecting off the sides and hitting the channel in the back so I put a little thin one inch section of carpet in there again didn't seem to make much of a difference so I cut out some further sections so there was two layers of carpet um, and I even tried rolling up a bit of rag and shuff shoveling that right in the opening as well because it seemed to be the deflection of the pellets into the back of the target that was making most of the noise. Slight difference, but I wouldn't have said that uh, it was significant, but then I can't hear what my, uh, my neighbours are in the other side of the fence. So that's the big one then. Oh. The smaller version, I uh, don't know if you can see there, if I bring that, but the, the pellets were like skidding again skidding through uh, the putty and hitting the back of the uh, channel so again I put another rag in uh, to stop the pellets from hitting that that back channel there um, I don't know whether a thicker uh, as you can see the pellets haven't gone through the putty to hit the metal but it still didn't sound significantly quieter to me I don't know um, perhaps it was um, finally uh, the cardboard box the portable backstop I think this was the quietest of all now I put a few pellets in all in quite a small group less than 10 mil no sign of any protrusions on the back so they're perfectly safe in there. Can't hear them shaking about, so they've obviously been contained. So I would say from, from my experience from where I was shooting that the box was quieter, which you'd expect to be the case because there's no metal to metal contact. But bear in mind, we're shoving these little lumps of lead, even at sub 12 pounds, we're shoving these little lumps of lead, a fair old rate of knots down the range. Um, and there's a 
there's a fair amount of energy contained in that so you're always going to get a bit of noise but um, I'll leave, you, leave it to your judgment to whether you think it's actually worth the effort to, um, to do this to make it quieter. So uh, over to you then. So there we have it then. Wasn't sure what uh, the outcome would be for this. I thought it was a, uh, a useful experiment because um, a lot of people use these pellet catchers and they can be noisy. And uh, well you've seen the results. You have to make up your own mind whether you think it's worth these uh, the effort. To, I mean not a lot of effort but uh, to uh, reduce the sound a little bit. So that's all I have for you in this video. Hope you found that interesting. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. So bye for now.